you gotta wire it and rig it up. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, for another night of Vero Beach High School Fighting Indians Baseball. We're here at the reservation for our first pitch scheduled for 6.30. It's March 6th. It's a beautiful, what, 72 degrees, Bertie? Uh, let's check and see what the phone says. He's got, yep, 76. 76. That's not a bad guess, is it? No, I think uh, you should try out for Weatherman after this gig doesn't tan out for you. My name's Curtis Carpenter, and I'm here with my colleague, Stephen Bird, and we're here for our second home game of the season. They did not fire us yet. <laughs> Maybe because we're not paid, but so as you, we are. As you can see, the managers are out at home plate for the pregame conference, and um, we're going to do a couple national anthems this season. This is our very first ever international broadcast. Yes, even though we're in America, we're still doing an international broadcast. Eh? Eh? That's right. We've got a team from Drummondville, Ontario, Canada here this evening, and it um, should be a fun contest. Yes, um, our freshman team just got done playing I don't know if it was their JV or freshman team uh, but it's a quick game um, I believe the final was 15 nothing the freshman played really well and I believe they are still undefeated so we got a lot of young good athletes that play baseball here at Beach High School that's right so as you can hear there's some music going on in the background in a few moments you're gonna hear uh, the national anthem the starting lineup the whole bit and then we'll uh, get underway with the game so enjoy the music and uh, hold tight we'll get started here shortly Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome tonight to the reservation for tonight's contest between the Voltageurs from Drummondville, Quebec, Canada, and your Vero Beach Fighting Indians. First, the substitute for the Voltageurs, Alex Leclero, Nathan Beauregard, Jake Marcro. And now for the starters, number 98, playing shortstop, Gabriel DeGloy. Number two, catching, Kalen Gautier. Number 28, pitching, Jonathan Carden. Number 49, playing first base, Tristan Gilbert. Number 87, playing right field, Alex Allard. Number 41, playing second base, Julian Wu. Number 61, playing left field, Lud Trottier. Number 38 playing center field, Phil Provincial. Number five, number one playing third base, Al Royer. The Voltageurs are coached by Sam and Steven Gilbert. And now for your Vero Beach Fighting Indians. First the substitutes. Number two, Ben Jurgen. Number three, Jacob Williams. Number four, Alexander Vagrovello. Number six, Kevin Mendegarn. 
14, Aaron Adams. Number 15, Anthony Cross. Number 16, Hayden Osteen. Number 17, Nicholas Salerno. Number 20, Brendan Vasquez. Number 25, number 8, Dylan Dean. Number 11, Casey Swords. And now for your starters. Number 24, playing shortstop, Nick Dean. Number 23, playing center field, David Lucci. Pitching tonight, Hunter Passon. DH for Hunter, number 13, Hunter Kuhn. Playing first base, number 19, Peter Holden. Playing third base, number 7, Gabby Mendez. Playing right field, number 25, Blake Caudell. Playing left field, number five, David Shadupa. Catching, number one, Gage Brackett. Playing second base, number 10, Matt Vaughn. The Indians are coached by Brian Rahal. Tonight's umpires, the plate, Mike Clipsey, the field, Sean Schofield. Please rise for the playing of the national anthems. First, for the national anthem of Canada. And now for the national anthem of the United States of America. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's the first time we've ever had two national anthems at a broadcast. It is only our second broadcast. 
Well, we're ready to play some ball here tonight. How about that? All right, on the mound, we have Hunter, Pattis Hunter Pattison, left-handed pitcher committed to the University of Central Florida. This is his first start on the season. He has pitched a couple of times this year. Actually, once, only once this year. Only once, not counting preseason. He actually um, was our last pitcher. A uh, tough game on Hunter. Friday. Um, at Treasure Coast, it went uh, went ten innings, lost in the bottom of the tenth, and Patterson was on the bump. And I guess it was a funny play to end that game, but um, he went two innings plus in that game, and um, here he is again, ready to go tonight. All right, again, you uh, for those of you at home, you have a, a live in look, um, very similar to how the umpire would have. Uh, have it so you're going to see the ball come in we have multiple camera angles here for you we're going to try and do a little picture in picture with the scoreboard we're trying to learn from our mistakes uh this year we're going to switch over to another view from up in the press box all right so we've got a uh, a camera here for our uh balls that are in play and uh steven bird's going to be doing the camera work i'm going to be doing the directing and producing we're both on av so uh this is a two-man show that Makes it a lot of fun sometimes, and sometimes not. And we'll get better each broadcast, we promise you that. So we're gonna bring you back to the uh, the play-by-play -play, uh, view here. And as you can see, Pattison is a tall, lanky lefty. Does he throw hard, Bertie? Yeah, he'll, he'll hum it up there a little bit. Yeah, you know, upper 80s. I believe he's touched 90 at some point in some prospect thing. But uh, he's committed to Central Florida, like you said earlier, he's only a junior, so good kid too. We're looking forward to getting this ball game underway here. So the first batter for Drummondville, or uh, Marie Riviere, we're not really sure which is which? Marie Riviere is the school. Drummondville is the town Leading that they're from. The so, um, 98. 98. Gabriel Dubois. When we were looking at their numbers earlier, we weren't sure if they're playing hockey or baseball. Yeah, number 98 is not a very uh, typical baseball number, is it? Not too many major leaguers have held that number. So, Gabriel Dubois is up. He's playing shortstop for the Volgiers this evening. And what is a Volgere, if you may? This is a, it's a Canadian soldier, from what I understand. Uh, thank you, Mr. Holden, for that information pre-game. All right. First pitch comes in for a ball. Dubois is going to have a 1-0 count to start the game. Second offering by Holden is a strike on the outer half, it looks like. And if you notice, these coaches are wearing shorts. I don't know if they're happy because they're in Florida or that's just the way they can coach up there. But in Florida, we're supposed to wear pants. Well, you know, baseball is kind of a bizarre sport where the uh, baseball managers, uh, here, we're going to show you the manager actually wearing shorts. <coughs> it is kind of a bizarre sport where the managers wear the same clothes as the ball players. Oh, there's a fly ball, center field. Looks like Lucci's under there to, uh, to handle it. And uh, it's going to be a fly out to the out to the center fielder to keep it score at home. Now batting number two, Kalen Gautier. Going back to our pitch to pitch view there. F08. Take that, you know. Always want to get that first guy. Usually the leadoff guy can run a little bit, and if you keep him off base, you usually have a good solid inning. The catcher's up, wearing number two. Kalen Gauthier. I'm assuming that's how you spell that, eh? No idea. Mm -hmm. All well, right. What part of Canada is did, Do we know her? And we know the city. These guys are from the Qu French Quebec. French part? The French part. Yeah, there's a fly ball to the. Oh, back behind Drummond the stop. You're going to. It's just east of Montreal, Drummondville. So that's where these guys are from. There's a foul ball there that went out of play. Cameraman was slow. Cameraman was slow. You're going to hear that very often this evening. Yes, it's, um, once again, it's like a 12-man job. Try them, too. All right, so the second pitch to the catcher, Gauthier, here. He wears number two and plays the second position. I wonder if that's why he wears two, Birdie. I don't know. Maybe he's a Jeter fan. It's ball one up and away. 
Got a 1-1 count here. I'm sorry, 1-2. Missed that foul ball, Birdie. Oh, another fly ball. To the outfield. Lucci is busy out there in center field. All right. Now batting number 28, Jonathan Carden. There is a saying in baseball, you know, if he makes his third out, it's a record shared by many. That's right. Like all three outs in one inning. That's right. We've got two FO8s on the uh, on the books. So uh, Jonathan Carden comes up. He's the pitcher for the Voltiers this evening. And he's the third batter wearing number 28. Big kind of dude for them. Got some big boys over there. Ooh, the first pitch from Patterson is a heater up and away for ball one. Patterson goes from the stretch only nowadays. He feels more comfortable out of it. You've seen a lot of major leaguers do that uh, lately, aren't you, Bernie? Yeah, it's, you know, in the past, it was wind up, wind up, wind up. Now it's, there's a whole bunch of different variations out there. So one one's the count with two outs in the top of the first. Make that one two. There's a strike on the inner half of the plate. So Patterson's thrown ten pitches here. He's only thrown three balls. That's pretty good. Take that all day. Yeah. Well, make that four. You jinxed it. I jinxed it. It's two, two, two. No good for you, as the kids at home say. In the top of the first inning. Your kids are actually here today. They are here. They're standing right behind me. Oh, oh there's that's, a ball. Hit. That's ball hit the left field. We're on it. Oh, and we need to turn out of the inning there. I thought that ball was hit a little bit harder than it was. Nupa did a good job out there of tracking it well, making the play. All right, so that's going to bring us to the middle of the first, and we're going to bring you a message from our first inning sponsor, Citrus 3. Hi, this is Curtis Carpenter with Citrus 3. We're a social media marketing company down in paid position, but if you'd like to help us out, uh, we have a client that we need to... Hi, this is Curtis Carpenter with Citrus 3. If you'd like to help uh, participate... like to help participate... That's Carpenter with Citrus 3. We're a social media marketing company in downtown Vero Beach. We're holding an open call for anybody. Alright, so that brings us back to the ballpark here. Got Jonathan Carden, who uh, flew out to the left fielder in the, to end the first top of the first inning, is up there pitching. And boy, what a funky delivery this kid has! Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be sidearm, and it looks like he fights to get back on top of the ball. And the ball has a little bit of movement, you know. Those funky deliveries, something you don't see every day, can be tough to hit. Yeah, it's very interesting. We uh, we watched the uh, the Drummondville JV team had a uh, girl pitching actually in the uh, at the end of the, at the end of the game earlier. Yeah, she came in relief and got some outs for them. As they, you know, they gave up seven runs in the first. And she kind of settled things in the third and fourth. And she had a funky delivery as well. She she, she threw straight overhand. Over and over. She's any more on top. I don't know what we'd call it. So the first pitch from Carden here is to Nick Dean, who's leading off. Dean's playing shortstop this evening for the Indians. I'll tell you what, he's having a heck of a year at the plate. Huh? He's five for nine with a walk. And there's a reason Louisville wants him. That's right. He's committed to uh, the Louisville Cardinals. It's a ball two there. So two pitches, two balls to Nick Dean. Sitting probably one spot right here. If it's not there, he'll take it. It's up. Ball three. Okay, well, I don't know. What do you think Coach Ray Hall's going to give him here? The take or just? Hmm, I think in a conventional uh, game, bottom of the first, maybe swing the bat a little bit. But we'll see. Gave him the take. Take all the way. He didn't even want to budge. Now, whether he gave it to him or. He just decided on his own. Man, yeah. We'll never yeah. know. We'll see some, well, we could ask him later, maybe. But maybe hey. we will know. It's a hitter's count here. Three-one to Dean. Check Ooh. swings and fouls it back. That brings the count full. 
she was not happy about that decision. Now that might have been ball four, huh? That would have been ball four. But hey, let's see how it plans out. Payoff pitch. The uh, ball hit up the middle. <laughs> Solid hit there by Nick Dean to bring his batting average this season to 600. It's not too bad if I'll say so myself. No, I'd say uh, 600 is an okay batting average. He's going to bring up the center fielder, David Lucci. We go from D1 commit to D1 commit. He's committed to the University of Florida as a pitcher, but he's uh, playing center field this evening. As you saw on the top of the, eight, uh, top of the first, he made the first two outs of the inning. There's another D1 commit on deck. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Bertie. <laughs> hey, I got to stay one up, step ahead at all times. Foul ball back behind the screen there. So one. They might try something, maybe a little hit and run or maybe a straight steal coming up. Something to get that guy in uh, scoring position. Looks like a ball low there to Lucci, bring the count to 1-1. One, one. So Lucci can pitch, hit, play center. And he's really good at all three. There you go. All around ball player there. Ball up and away. It's 2 1. Carden coming in for the 10th pitch of the inning here. It's a ground ball to the third baseman. Fields the ball, makes the throw over a little late. Oh. with the infield single. Sorry, I was trying to watch it live, not yep. with the camera. And watch with the camera. Rookie yeah. mistake, Birdie. Rookie yeah. mistake. Now batting number 13, Hunter Cruz. All right, I can almost promise you there will not be a bunt right here as Coach is looking to uh, – Break this game open in the top half, or top of the, f or bottom of half of the first. Hunter Cooley's up to bat. He's the third batter of the inning. He is DHing for the pitcher, Hunter Pattison. Who is also a D1 commit. Who is also committed to University of Central Florida, as we said before. So we've got Nick Dean committed to Louisville. David Lucci committed to University of Florida. Hunter Cooley committed to FAU. Uh, Hunter Pattison committed to UCF. It's not too bad. It's a stacked lineup, if you ask me. Got no one count here to uh, Hunter Cooley. Looks like a ball away. One one. So Cooley pitches as well. He pitched uh, in the game Friday evening yeah, against uh, Treasure Coast. Seven innings. Seven innings. We gave up what, one ru one run. One run that you know I guess maybe couldn't have happened. If, you know, get a call your way, but that's that's the game. Oh. Here we go. Ball hit the left field. Looks like we're scoring one. Looks like we're scoring two. Nope, only scoring one. Play by play guys got to pay better attention. Yes. All right. So a line drive to left field there. Single for Nick Dean. Gets Lucci over to third, and Nick Dean scores. Yeah, Bring that was scored. a hit and run right there. And um, no, that is. Cooley did a good job Number putting 19. a barrel on the bat. Peter. They're on the ball, I guess I should say. So Peter Holton's coming up to bat. First and third. Holton's playing first base this evening as he has most of the season for uh, Vero Beach Fighting Indians. Got runners on first and third. Hunter Cooley at first, David Lucci at third. No outs at the bottom of the first with the Indians up one to nothing. That's ball one to Holden. <laughs> Throw over to first. Doesn't get him. You'll have to trust me on that one. I think the camera guy was on it, but the uh, director was camera not. The camera guy's in a wide view, so he's on everything let's, right now. Let's give you guys a, a quick look here at what we're looking at in the press box. All right, we've got a pretty wide angle. Sorry I took you away from the uh, umpire's view there, but 
this is what we're looking at. This is where we're getting your uh, your views from when the balls hit. So uh, sorry about that fence there. We're we're working on it. We're trying to get rid of it. All right. So back to the umpire's view there. Got a 2-0 count to Holden. And there's a strike on the outer third of the plate. It's not a bad pitch. No, no. It's uh, if he could live there, and it'd be all right. He's been missing up a little bit, and those are the balls that have been getting hit. It's like a ball away there for uh, ball three. Again, we've got a hitter's count here to Peter Holden. It's 3-1, and we haven't recorded an out yet. No, hopefully we won't record one for a little bit. Um, might see the runner move right here. You never know, 3-1, first and third. 3-1 pitch. Swung and missed. That was a swing. He wanted all of that one. I don't blame him. Most three ones you want to just <laughs> try to hit in what we call the upper deck. Live life like a three-one count, right, Birdie? Yeah, that's, that's a slogan. That's a little baseballism for you, eh? Hey. Okay. Payoff pitch coming from Carden to Holden. Runners going. Oh, ball four. So, um... The throw is unnecessary since it's ball four. It's always good to get a little practice in, though, right, Bertie? Yeah. Well, yeah. you also risk throwing it away yeah, and the guy scoring from third. So that's that's I point. usually want to hold yeah. that one. It's a good Thank point. You. That brings up the fifth batter of the inning. Gabby Mendez playing third base for the Indians this evening. We've got the bases loaded with no outs up one nothing. A little yeah. mound visit there. Need some more runs here. What do you think you're talking about there, Bertie? Throw more strikes. There Get you go. Get ahead of the hitter. <coughs> Let the defense play the defense behind him. It's a quick conversation. As it should be. As you can see there, like we were talking about earlier, the, the Canadian coach is wearing shorts. And a scully as he makes a mound visit. And a scully, yeah, well. You know, you never know when the ball might come in from who knows where. Yeah. Okay. Here comes Gabby Mendez, a versatile infield for the Indians, playing third base this evening. You'll see him at shortstop sometimes, but great fielder, good bat. A lot of talent. Let's see what he's got here. Swing at the first pitch. Oh, that's a chopper. Chopper in the left field. Birdie's on it. We scored one. Oh. Gonna hold Cooley at third. So that leaves the bases loaded. With one run scoring. Take that all day. Number 25. Blake Cardell. Going to bring up Blake Caudell playing right field this evening for the Indians. It's the sixth batter of the evening here. Still not recorded an out. No outs, two nothing Indians, bases loaded. Oh, butte! Where's that curveball been all night, Birdie? I don't know. Lays it in there. He's saving it for the bases loaded, no outs, I guess. I guess. We had an opportunity last batter. Well, didn't want to show it too soon. Here we go. Wow, he's got him down 0 2. Blake, you're just trying to put this ball in play right here, make something happen. You got two strikes on him. Foul ball back to the uh, fence there. Keeps the count 0 2. Riled our view for a second. Yeah. Almost hit the camera. It's all right. Got fancy cases on those things, don't we, Birdie? <laughs> He's speechless. Uh, yeah. That's to say the least. <laughs> Ooh, oh, him. gets him in the back of the foot there. So we've got our hurt first hit batsman of the evening. You're going to get hit. O2 is not a bad count to get hit. Nope. That's an RBI. Brings up David Chinupa. He's playing left field for the Indians this evening. He's coming up with the bases loaded, no outs. Up 3 nothing. 
Strike one. Looks like a decent pitch to hit right there. He's maybe. progressing a little bit this evening, Bird. Should have taken a little longer bullpen there. He's about 22 pitches in. Ooh, a swing and a miss on another. Pretty pitch. Oh. Speechless still. <laughs> it's 0-2 on Chinupa. <clears throat> um, I hear a second baseman talking, but I could not understand him. Yeah, they're speaking French, Brady. Oh, oh another ball on the inside. Oh. Gets by him. <laughs> Looks like Peter Holden's going to score. Runners all move up. Peter Holden scores to bring the score to four nothing. Got a one two count on David Schnupa. And still no outs in the inning. All right, Bertie, how much French do you know? Bonjour. Parlez vous Francois? That's all I know. And bonjour, I guess. We. Oui. I'm a French model. You seen that commercial? No, I haven't. It's a pretty good one. Oh, we got two two on Chinupa here. <laughs> All right, so we've got <coughs> Blake Caudell on second, Gabby Mendez on third. Scores 4 nothing at the bottom of the first. We have no outs. And now we have a 3-2 count on David Chinupa. All right, the payoff pitch here. And he walks him to load the bases. Alright, so that's going to bring up Gage Brackett, who's catching for the Indians this evening. Another good opportunity to get an RBI. Here's an opportunity to blow this game wide open here. It's 4 nothing in the first, and that's uh, that's not a comfortable enough lead, I don't believe. What do you think, Bertie? I think with our pitching staff, usually 2 nothing. Oh, I have some confidence there. First pitch is high and in, called for a strike. I think that's a 4 nothing strike zone right there. Still too early to open up your zone. Yeah, I agree. But I that didn't look like a strike. Yeah, I agree there, too. Apologize to uh, the home plate umpire, uh, Mike Flipsy. If his family's watching. Sorry shot. about that, but that wasn't a good call. We make mistakes up here, too. Yeah. All right, it's 1-1 one, one on bracket. Catching for the Indians this evening, as, he, as he's done for the previous three games. Oh, there's oh. a ball hit the left. Birdie's on it. We got one run. Gonna hold They're going to hold third. him at third, which was a good call. He would have been hosed. All right. So all the runners go go base to base. We've got a 5-0 uh, five game here, bringing up second baseman Matt Vaughn. And this is also a nine hole, so it means we will bat around Matt this inning. Vaughn. So another mound visit here. Oh. Comes that speed rule or speed up rule you're not familiar with. So the catcher was Gage Brackett who just singled the left. Now he is being um don't want to call it pinch ran for, but it's being sped up for by Alan Glanville, who's a nice football player. Alright, unfortunately he's uh pigeonholed at first by two runners ahead of him. But we'd love to see his speed. Yeah. Apparently, he's got pretty good speed in the, outf uh, in the uh, football field. <coughs> so Vaughn's got a 2-0 uh, count here with the bases loaded. Indians out are up five nothing in the bottom of the first. Still no outs. Ball high. We're looking at a 3-0 count here on Vaughn. I think we still go a green light right here. What do you think? Green light 3-0. Up 5 nothing. first inning, no outs. Give the kid a chance to hit. Oh. Ooh. Up and in. Nice friendly 3-0 I, I uh, straight take, call. I would take that pitch, too. Yeah. Hey. Right. So it's 3-1 on Vaughn. Is this his first at bat of the season? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. All right. I believe he got one in the preseason. Okay. 
preseason was uh, the Mustang Classic, correct? I believe that's yeah. Merritt Island. They played Merritt Island and they played. Uh, they did not play. They played at Merritt Island. Right. They played O'Galley and they played George Jenkins. George Jenkins. That's right. Lakeland. Oh, we're gonna strike out for the first out of the inning. So it took nine batters to get the first out of the inning. That's gonna bring up Nick Gain, who singled in his first at bat, which uh, seems like forever ago. Probably doesn't to this pitcher, but ball one to Dean. It brings to the old age-old question: What is batting around? Well, that is a good question. I've always thought batting around is if you complete the ninth batter. And then Vince Scully, you know, who we both agree with wholeheartedly thinks, you know, that 10th guy has to come up to make it a full circle, to make it around. We've got a short delay in the game. The uh, bullpen catcher had to go retrieve a ball from right field. But uh, anyhow, yeah, as uh, Bertie says, Vince Scully, he, he was under the impression a 10th batter had to, uh, had to bat in the inning. And I, I disagree. I, I do too, and I don't disagree with Vin very often. But, but if, anybody like if your 9th guy comes up, you bat it around. You hit everybody. That's right. That's right. It's an age-old uh, debate in baseball, right? No, probably will never be solved. Um. There's a fly ball to the right side. First baseman's camped under it in foul territory. And he drops. You can't let those easy outs go, especially when you're down 5 nothing and struggling no. to get the second out of the inning. Take any out you can get. And, uh, gotta make that play. I mean, it was, it was a mile high. As high as the light poles here, Vera. But uh, still wasn't that far to go, though, either. Nope. So that brings the count to 1-2. Bases are still loaded with one out in the bottom of the first inning. The Indians are up 5-0. Uh, All right. That's ball three. As we've talked about, that brings up the 3-1 hitters count. All right. Let's go, Nick. going to drive this ball right here. There's oh. ball. Fly ball to uh, looks like the second baseman there. He camps under it and catches it. I believe we had um, infield fly called by uh, Sean out there in the field. Caldell uh, threatened to run there, but he decided to hold back. So that's the second out of the inning. If you're not familiar with the infield fly, it means bases are loaded or it's either first and second. And you have a pop up somewhere in the infield range, but it must be a fair ball. <coughs> So that brings up David Lucci, who had an infield hit in his first bat, which was earlier this inning. Looks at a ball, low and away. Counts 1-0 with two outs, and the base is loaded, and the Indians up 5 to nothing. Another ground ball to the left side. And that's another infield hit for Lucci. That brings up number 13. Yeah, that's a tough play, but... Once again, you got to make those plays if you're going to help your pitcher out. That's right. So that's going to put in the sixth run of the inning for the Indians. They're now up 6 nothing against the Drummondville Voltiers. Voltiers. I'm being corrected by the, uh, by the, by the PA, by the PA guy <laughs> because I don't speak French. The fly ball to the right side. Where's our cameraman? First baseman gets some redemption, but it's out of play. <laughs> Earlier this inning, he uh, dropped a, a can of corn over there by first base. I believe there's only two batters there. That's right. Didn't matter much because Dean flew out. But, but still more pitches that the pitcher did not want to necessarily throw. But she's camping in the 30s right now. This pitcher is getting worked. <laughs> Oh. So Hunter Cooley's up to bat. Count here's 1-1 one, one after a pitch way inside. <laughs> the ball hit the left there. Smoke down the line. And it's a foul ball. That is a tough camera angle for us to get there, but again, you're going to have to take our word for that. We got it, decent enough. It's gonna bring the count to one-two. 
two outs in the bottom of the first. Indians up 6 nothing, and the bases are loaded. Cooley had a single to left field earlier. It looks like he likes uh, pulling a ball over there. Yeah, ball's in or middle end. You drive it that way. Now he's hitting the other way. <laughs> Foul ball to the right side. Way out of play. So as we discussed before, Cooley is committed to Florida Atlantic University. I believe he's going to pitch a bunch there, but he can hit. He's dh in tonight. Yeah, it's uh, same as Lucci. Both can hit as well as pitch. It's the one-two pitch. It's in the dirt. Now the count's 2-2-2. Two, two, two. No good for you. What do you think he's going to throw here? Hopefully a strike. He's going to try and throw a strike, but he doesn't. <laughs> so it's 3-2 on the batter. Runner's got to be going here, even yeah. with the score 6 nothing. We should go wide here. We're going to go around. wide here. Let's do it. And have all go. the runners run. The guy at third should peel off safely. Don't want to run too close to the hitter. And that's ball four. And, um... Like we said earlier, Mr. Glanville is a great football player. It was his first time playing baseball. He didn't quite know to run there. Well, he learned. But his Coach Ray Hall is in his ear right now. You know, just teaching up the game to him. He's a great athlete. He'll figure it out. Teachable moments. The more you know. Another mound visit. Boy, they'd be in trouble in the major leagues now. You're only allowed six mound visits, right? Well, he's changing them, so I believe... Uh, it's irrelevant. I got you. We're going to go back to the umpire view here for the uh, pitcher change. The DHS Fight Indians baseball program would like to thank our two team sponsors, Caraba's Italian Grill and Chick-fil-A Restaurant. Please visit Caraba's and Chick-fil-A to show them they appreciate their Let's support. talk a little bit about Coach Ray Hall while we got a moment. Sure. This is uh, sixth year at the helm of the head coach of Vera Beach High School. He's um, did some time at Brevard. Um, I don't know how many years he coached there. I guess I could do the math. Sure. Started do the math. Do the math. 2005 was his first year. All right. This is been six year here. All right. So that's 2013. He started here. He ended in 2012. So that's eight years. Oh five. Eight years. Started eight. ended yes. in 2012. So he did eight that. years at Brevard as an assistant up there. Um, drove every day from Sebastian High School at the time where he was teaching to practice and got home late, 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 late some nights. So, um, you know, he's from Miami, played down there. I forget the high school off the top of my head. He's probably going to kill me for that. Um, oh, we just went there last year. Coral Gables. I, I redeemed myself. Um, he married his high school sweetheart named Kim, and they have four children. That's right. She's a teacher at Glendale? She's a teacher at Citrus. She was Citrus. at Osceola for was years. Osceola. That's and then right. uh, she took a different position this year at Citrus. Um, they, his young, or his oldest son is uh, on the JV team as well, and also a JV quarterback. Played uh, college at Broward Community College, and then the college at Charleston is where he got his degree. That's a good little bio on uh, Brian yeah. Rayle. You know, I, sh I should know a lot about him. But um, if you have any questions, just tweet them in. All right, so who we got pitching, Curtis? Number 97, Lefty. Alex LeClerc. And uh, again, tall, lanky guy. Another somewhat funky uh, delivery there. He throws three-quarters slash sidearm. Another hockey number. That's right, 97. I wonder if he's related to Mike LeClerc. He was a hockey player. He played for the Anaheim Mighty Ducks for all you uh, hockey fans out there. But if you haven't noticed, we've got a little rush playing. We're uh, trying to be friendly to our uh, yeah. to our Canadian friends there. And one thing this program has always tried to do is show class. From you know the announcers to the coaches to the players to the concession stand. You, know, you want to have a classic program. That's what we try to do here at Beer Beach. Up for the, up for the Indians, number 19, Peter Holden. So the first batter LeClerc's going to face is Peter Holden, who's coming up. He uh, walked in his first at bat, which was forever ago. And that's ball one. So 
So if you took a little break, went to the restroom, made a sandwich, did something during that pitching change, I'll give you a recap here as the uh, second pitch from Lefkirk comes in, and it's 1-1. The Indians are up 7-0, scores 1-1. We have the bases loaded, Peter Holden's up, and we have two outs in the bottom of the first inning. Well, the freshman team did score seven in the first inning in their game. Let's see if we can outdo them. Nice looking pitch there for a second strike. Brings the count to one, two. Right now, runners are going to be moving on contact. Two outs, two strikes. That ball moves, you better move. Ooh, oh, and there was some sort of funky pitch that came out of the hand. Uh, I don't think that came out right. But no, he uh, slowed his whole body down. I don't know if it tried to be a curveball or some kind of off speed, but you got to throw it the same way you throw a fastball, just with a different grip. And oh, Sean and he out there. He called a ball. Yikes. I didn't see what happened. Did you, Bernie? I did. It looked like he tried to come set and stop, and then you can't do that. That's a no-no. Man, it's tough to do after a pitch like that, too. Rally you up a little bit. Yeah, but umpire still got to call strikes, and they still got to call the game the way it is. That's right. All right. So that brings in Brackett to make the score 8 nothing. We have runners on second and third now. And that's a strikeout. So there's a whole lot to go over there. Um, wow, 8 nothing, 8 runs, 5 hits, um, 1 error. Yeah. Two left. You know, you'll take an eight inning run. Eight run inning. Eight run inning, anytime you can have one. Especially I like eight inning, eight, eight inning runs, though, too. Yeah. Those are usually you know. good for you. I like eight runs a game. There you go. With this pitching staff, we're going to win every game of the year, but <laughs> you know, can't always get that many runs in a game. I believe Patterson may only go two or three tonight. And we'll get some other guys in and. Uh, Get some guys some work because there's also a game Friday and Saturday. Our uh, our guest for the evening happened to pop in here. Let's see if we can move the mic over and make it a little more uh, comfortable for everybody. So our guest is the father of the center fielder tonight. And also the reason he's up here is because he is the Booster Club president for the Fighting Indians Diamond Booster Club, I believe is the name. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I mean, talk a little bit about yourself <laughs> and what you do for the program here. I know you guys work hard collecting all the money. and. Well, the Booster Club is primarily about uh, sponsoring the, the program and the coaches and the kids. So what our, our mission is to try and fundraise as much money as we can to help support the program so that we can provide them with everything that they need throughout the season. Okay, and, and they do get some nice perks in this program. Can you tell us what a couple of those are? Well, you know, we help supplement the uh, school district and we buy field equipment, we buy screens, uh, we provide um, practice uniforms or practice gear for the kids. Um, we provide transportation for our spring break tournaments. Um, we put them up for, for those week-long tournaments, so we provide hotel rooms for the uh, varsity team. Um, you know, this, this year we're providing them travel, travel outfits and uh, oh, wow. turf shoes, and we bought them new cleats. Of course, we're sponsored by Adidas. Yes, that's now. a new, uh, new to the Vera Beach High School this year for all sports. So that's what we, uh, that's what we try to do. No, uh, we missed that play, but he's out at first. Yeah, you're going to have to trust us on that. That was Tristan Joubert, the uh, first baseman for the Voltiers. He uh, grounded out to shortstop Nick Dean. Our cameraman was not on it. He was enthralled by Mr. Lucci's hey, like I said, uh, <laughs> conversation. <laughs> it's a 12-man job, and we got two doing it. That's right. But we're doing it best well, we can. you know, besides the fundraising aspect of it, you know, we help support the coaches. Um, you know, with, with all their duties and, and try to assist them in, in, you know, setting up the accommodations and, and making sure that they have food. Of course, we're sponsored by uh, Caraba's Italian Grill mm -hmm. and Chick-fil-A. So um, we coordinate the food for all three of our teams, freshmen, JV, and 
and varsity. So we provide food for all away and home games. So even on a road game or home game, the all athletes, all teams are fed before the game, correct? Yes, absolutely. Wow, that's um, not too many high school programs can uh, do that for them. And that's extremely generous from Carabas. That's yes. absolutely. Great. Especially and, with and three Chick teams. Chick-fil-A, yeah. Ooh, nice pitch to get him. Pitch strike three to Allard. And that's the first strikeout of the evening for Patterson. And so can you tell us where you're going for spring break this year? Uh, this spring break, we are that playing in the Sanford High in. School Memorial yeah. Tournament. Okay, the one they played in last year. The same tournament we played in last year. Supposedly, there's, mm -hmm. I heard rumor that there's six teams that made it to the Final Four last year that'll be wow. playing in it. So, um, we'll be facing some great competition and, and uh, preparing our kids for the uh, season-ending run and district tournament and hopefully a, a run to the state tournament. So, we could be one of those Final Four teams as well. Absolutely. <laughs> I believe uh, last year when they um, did the overnight trip, they got to go to a Magic game, and the Booster Club provided that, I Right, right. We bought them tickets to go to a Magic game. I'm not sure what we'll do for them this year. Um, okay. We haven't really discussed it, but we always try to do something special for them since they are, they are giving up their spring break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's only one game a day, so there's a lot, a lot of downtime with high school kids. They seem to enjoy it. And last year we got the... David Eckstein was one of the coaches on uh, was Sanford, I believe. Yep. Or Seminole. Seminole. I think one of our games last year, uh, we took them to, uh, uh, what's the shooting? Oh, the paintball. That, yeah, to a paintball facility. So, um, you know, it's all about it's all about team camaraderie and, and keeping the guys together on and off the field. Yeah, and... Um, you know, you want that as a coaching standpoint. That way you, you guys can um, relate to each other and on and off the field. For those of you uh, watching the game, that was an awfully quick half inning. We had a 6-3 and two strikeouts to uh, Tristan Jubert, the uh, first baseman, Alex Allard, the right fielder, and Julian Houle, the second baseman. So that's going to bring us to the bottom of the second inning, which is going to bring us Gabby Mendez, Blake Caudell, and David Chinupa. We can keep going here. We, Carter and Associates is our uh, second inning sponsor, so I feel like uh, we can just keep talking to you, right? Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Carter since you're up here? You yeah. want to read the script? <laughs> I can let you read the script. I usually do it, and I don't do a good job. Uh, Carter <laughs> Associates is a full-service engineering and surveying firm. Um, we've been in Indian River County uh, since 1911. Um, so, uh, you know, we provide... We provide uh, from start to finish on uh, all types of projects, residential, commercial, agricultural type projects. Um, you know, we have a great reputation and um, you know, we're, our goal is to service our clients. So. That's great. We, we thank you guys for uh, sponsoring Vero Beach High School Baseball and all the work that you do and that I know Carter allows you to do to come out here. I'm sure that uh, if you calculate the uh, the hourly rate that they're paying you while you're out here, uh, they're, they're, they're donating quite a bit more than the typical sponsor. It might be a little more than the coaches actually make. Uh, well, we all know that's yeah. not much. And, and one thing you guys do is provide uh, supplements because I believe there's only three coaches allowed to be paid by the school. Correct, correct. So then the booster club will help out those other two or three. Right, so we pay the stipends. Uh, for the other three coaches. Oh, wow. That was an unbelievable play. There was a fly ball there if you missed it uh, to the right side. It dropped. The ball was rolling foul, and it looked like the pitcher picked it up on the line to make that a fair ball. If he had allowed that to roll another six inches, that would have been a foul. Up to bat, number 25, Blake Cardell. So, I'm going to call that an error. Uh, I'm not sure on which player, but... It was uh, well, it's a golden rule if it's not touch, but uh, I mean that ball's gotta be made. That was tough. Put a E on the board. Put a, board. Put a hit on the oh, board. Oh, all right. Well, there's an infield hit. Mendez is going to second, <laughs> and it looks like he's safe without a throw. Well, listen, before I check out, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to thank uh, Curtis Carpenter and Stephen Bird for volunteering their time for doing these play-by-plays. Are you, and, the Booster Club's not paying us? Oh, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. What do you mean volunteering? <laughs> well, well, it really wasn't in my budget. 
Oh man, well, we I need would, to pack up. I'm sure we, 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 we can we, provide we, you with a with a cheeseburger or a hot dog. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, they do make good cheeseburgers down there. At the you guys are making Indian sure my cafe. kids aren't uh, you know getting lost down there. We, so that's good really, enough. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, you know, the extra. But we enjoy it too. Yeah, so. we're doing this. Uh, because we want to be around the ball field and we enjoy watching these guys. So thank you for allowing us to do it. Got to give a little shout out to uh, Jay Dean, one of the players' parents. He couldn't mm -hmm. make it to the game. He's out of town, and I know he's watching the <laughs> broadcast right now, Jay. So um, enjoy those chicken hearts and and that uh, nice cold frosty beverage that you mm -hmm. have there. <laughs> he does not miss too many games, that's for sure. So. Anyways, I want to thank you again from uh, from the Booster Club. So okay. well, appreciate you guys, it, you, Mr. More than welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, sir. You uh, you enjoy the rest of this game. So we've got a 3-1 count on Blake Caudell, who uh, was hit by a pitch earlier uh, in the game in the first inning. He was hit in the back of the uh, yeah, hit in the back of the foot. It was 0-2. And now he's bases loaded. Yeah, so he's looking at a 3-2 count right now with no outs. We have Gabby Mendez on second. Oh, swing and a hit to the shortstop. Oh, wow, nice base running there by Mendez getting over to third on a play that's hit in front of him. You don't see that too often. <laughs> uh, the only time you can really go there is after it's thrown across. So that's that's going to bring up David Chinupa, who's the uh, left fielder for the Indians this evening. He walked in the first inning and scored a run. One of those eight. Yeah, hopefully he could do the same this inning, and then we'll have that magic number of ten. Um, another thing in high school, not necessarily in college or the pros, is there is a mercy rule. What's that rule, Bertie? Ten after four and a half. Since we're the home team, four and a half would be our... Uh, All right, so a team has to be up by ten runs after four and a half innings. Yes. Got it. All right. So we're at 2-0 on Chinupa here. We've got one out, and uh, Gabby Mendez is on third after uh, some hustling over there. Getting a second on a pass ball, getting a third on a ball hit in front of him. Chinupa fouls the ball back, and uh, that's his first strike of the at-bat. It's 1-2. You heard those whispers there. That's my eight-year-old coming up to give me some uh, <laughs> some change from his hot dog uh, that he got. Is it a good hot dog? Was it good? Not as heavy. He, yes. He closed the door <laughs> on me. All right, we've got a three-one count with one out to Chinupa here. Swings and fouls it back. That brings the count full. Looking to drive this run in anyway. We got infield back. No reason to play in up eight nothing unless you're gonna work on it or down eight nothing. Um, infield back. You know, ground ball to second base right here is an RBI. We'll give you the uh, wide angle view here for this payoff pitch, which is ball four. Looks like a pitch out, but uh, well, that's not what you want to do on a full count. Nobody on first. Nobody on first. Back to the uh, umpire view there. Hopefully uh, Gage could get on and um, Lambville might not have a runner from. I'd like to see the boy move. So we've got runners on first and third. We've got Gage Brackett coming up. Brackett also scored one of those eight runs. It's a ball up the way. 1-0. Ball fouled off to the right side, out of play. So Brackett started every game behind the dish. Um, you got Mosier as the uh, backup this year, correct? Yes, and I um, 
I didn't see him down there, so I don't know if he went with the JV is what I'm assuming because they played also. So all three teams played today. So that's a lot of Caravas and Chick-fil-A if you're keeping score at home. So um, JV is not back yet, um, but it should be. So who, who uh, comes in as the backup catcher for Bracket in this uh, in this instance if Mosher's not here? Just whoever will throw on the gear? <laughs> yeah, you don't. Um, we don't have to worry about that is what we like to think about. You know, um, I'm not sure who would be this year. Who will wear the tools of ignorance? Not me. Yeah. Well, let's hope we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Counts 3-1 to Bracket here. We've got one out, bottom of the second inning. Score is 8 nothing. we got runners on first and third. And that looks like another wall. All right, ball get my forward. wish of uh, Glanville coming in. But uh, not with the base empty in front. We, it looks like we have another mound visit. All right. Well, do we want to go ahead and do the trivia question since we're... Uh, all right, let's do it. I don't even know what it is. All, seven. all right. <laughs> so if you're listening at home, you need to tweet this. Um, tweet, tweet the answer. Tweet the answer to, to at VBHS Baseball, I believe is what okay. the handler is. Or it's like. at Baseball VBHS. Can you do either? Um, either, sure. Why not? Um, one will tweet out the question. If you answer that, it'd make life a lot easier. There you go. We can do that. Um, we, we had a right winner. Now. We had a winner last week. And um, he will be entering into a drawing at the end of uh, the year, and we'll have some prizes donated. But um, here we go with this question. Although currently divorced, which Hall of Fame catcher got married the same day as he made his MLB debut at the age of 19? Mm, that's so a great question. 19 years old, you get married early in the day, and then... Go make your MLB debut. Go make your MLB debut at 19. Mm. At 19, man, that's that's tough. Um, it's we a heck of a day. Probably, well, he's currently divorced, so um, uh, I can't yeah. say it's the greatest day of his life, but for a long time, it, it was. Remember, he's also a Hall of Fame. That might be the greatest day. That's a good that's a good hint there. Think of all the Hall of Fame catchers out there that have made debuts at 19 years old. I'm curious how this player did that day. Hmm. Well. Anyhow, that brings up Matt Vaughn. Uh, we've got the bases loaded. Uh, LeClerc is still in the game here. Uh, Vaughn down 0-1 with one out. We've got the bases loaded, one out. And that's strike two to Vaughn. So if you're on Twitter at home, look out for at VBHS Baseball. Our trivia question will be thrown out there. If you quote tweet the answer and you're correct, you'll be entered into a drawing. Uh, for later this season, we're going to be giving away lots of prizes. Yes. Um, if there's 10 games, we're going to try to get close to the 10 prizes if we can. Um, some stuff will be donated by our trivia um, answer last week, which was Alex Cobb. He's a um, nice guy. He sends stuff for the program to be donated. So some of the stuff might be some autograph memorabilia. You just never know what you're going to get. Matt Vaughn strikes up for the second time this evening. And now we've got two down in the bottom of the second with the Indians up 8 nothing, and the base is loaded. She say, do you love me? I tell her only partly. I only love my bed and my mom. So Nick Dean is coming up who's 6 for 11 on the season with a walk. And uh, he's got an opportunity to uh, put, this, uh, put this team up double digits. Ball inside almost gets him. Counts 1-0. So any more clues for our uh, oh. for our listeners? Well, well, if you think about the age, there's a certain culture that gets um, comes up quicker through the system because they're signed at 16. Or if you're, um, you know, in the United States, you usually have to wait until you're 18 to get drafted or out, out of high school. So you do the you're Bryce saying Harper, it's an international? Oh, there's a ball hit to the right side. I Where am. You at, Bertie? I'm saying it's international. Oh. Oh. I got my finger in the way. I tried to do too many duties there. That's my fault. I was trying to uh, tweet this out. Oh, man, you're killing me. All right. So I'm not really sure what happened, but I think that was a ground ball to the first baseman. It that, was. Uh, and it looked like he took it himself. All right. So that goes down in the book. It's just a three if you're keeping score at home. Three, you. All right. So um, the question's up there. Go ahead and, um, you know. 
reply to it. I'll win you some goods. Warming up the pitch for the Indians. Then I put that new for Ryan. Hey, the rest in peace. Hey, the rest in peace. Rest in peace to the parking lot. So did we ever find a stat for that day? No, I'm See looking up right now, as a matter of fact, as we're in between innings here. We have Nick Celedonio coming up to relieve Hunter Patterson, who's had a, uh, well, yeah, no hitter. He had a perfect game. Six up, six down. All right, so let's see if Celedonio can uh, continue the trend here. He had one inning on the year. It was uh, a save versus Melbourne. He looked pretty good in that. I believe it was one, two, three. What's that? His uh, outing versus Melbourne. Seventh we were here. We were here. Hey, it's our first ever save. I think it was one, two, three. All right. I'm still looking up this uh, the debut of this uh, trivia question winner. I believe it was in With the answer. 1991. So what year? 91. 91 was the debut. Yep. First to bat for the Voltagers. Well, I can't find a birdie. Will be number 61. I need a uh, game by game info. I'm not up to snuff there. No, well, we'll be giving the, um, the answer out. So if you can't find it, we, uh, we'll tweet it out and you can just listen to that and try to win. Well, you'll get the answer. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> this brings us to the top of the third. We have Nick Celedonio pitching to Lou Trottier, who is the left fielder for the Voltiers. Working on my French here, Bertie. Bonjour. No. <laughs> First pitch is a strike in there for Celedonio. And that's strike two. So, Bertie, we're seeing a lot of... Uh, these high numbers we talked a little bit about. Are these hockey numbers? Must be. You think these kids play hockey and these are the numbers they play when they play hockey? Maybe. They maybe they play, um, Ooh. Yeah. One, two, three, straight. They come straight oh. from hockey to baseball. That bring up number 38, Bill Provencal. Which may uh, explain a little bit about their swings. Well, maybe, maybe they got good slap shots. Phil Provencal is up. He's the center fielder for the Voltiers. He's wearing number 38. Eric Gagne. Eric Gagne. Eric Gagne. He's our a Canadian. Favorite, uh, number 38. Canadian baseball player for sure. <laughs> and four pitches, four strikes for Celedonio. Just a little bit about Gagne. Fine. What an amazing pitch. Uh, what was pitcher. that number? Is that 80-something saves? In a rope. Wow. He might have been, uh, might have had a little pharmaceutical help, but... <laughs> Hey. They all did it that way. They point, all right? did that. that they're not. Tough. Wow. Six pitches, six strikes. Take that all day. That's the third strikeout for the Indians. Up next is number That's one. the fourth strikeout for the Indians. Yeah. Fourth, if you're keeping track. That's right. Better than I am. Patterson had two in the second, and Saldonio's got two in the third. Right. And uh, that brings up number one, Al Voyer. Voyer. V O Y E R. So I found the, um, the, the game. It was on June 20th of 1991. There's a good clue. Oh, we had seven pitches, seven strikes. He was two pitches away from an immaculate inning, and he throws ball one. For those of you wondering, an immaculate inning is when you throw nine pitches, nine strikes, three strikeouts. And uh, so that brings the count to one, two, a foul ball to the left side there. And this Hall of Fame catcher went one for four with two ribbies that game. It's not a bad debut. No, I'll take that. I um, wonder if he wore his wedding ring while he played. That's got to be weird. Yeah, first time wearing it, and you got to go. Holding the bat, you know, wearing a glove with it. Yeah. You know you know who the starting pitcher was? Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown, another former Dodger. Look at yes. that. A guy that got paid an awful lot of money to not do so hot. Ooh, and there's a the hit up the hit. middle for the very first hit of the game for the Voltigiers, however you say that. And I'm um, sorry I didn't. Yeah, that's all right. We had the. Uh, he ran straight through the base instead of. Uh, he didn't turn? No. He, mm. We'll work on that. See? Okay. All right. So two pitches away from an immaculate, an immaculate inning, and now Saladonio's got a runner on. 
first runner on the of the year on. That's right. That's right. That brings up Gabriel Dubois, I assume. Back at the top. Shortstop for the Voltagiers. He's wearing number 98, another hockey number. Flew out to David Lucci in center field earlier uh, in the first inning, which seems like a week ago. Well, it was over an hour ago. Wow. Woo! Pitch on the inside, oh, and it nicks him. Go. I wasn't sure if it hit him, but it did. So there's a hit batsman by Celedonio. Still really not sure if he got him or not. I mean, inside, I thought I heard a thud, but... Well, Drummondville's got a little uh, action going on on the base paths there. We've got ducks on the pond. Beauty is we got two outs. Two so outs. Yep. Hopefully we go right at this guy and uh, let him get himself out right here. The catcher, Kalen Gauthier, is up. He's the second uh, batter in the lineup. He also flew out to David Lucci in the first inning. Oh, first pitch of the bat gets away from Brackett. And the runners advance. Now, now, uh... The that, that 90 feet away kind of, we like the shutouts. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'd like to see this game end with a goose egg up there, but. I don't know if that was a cross-up or. I don't know. I don't know. Missed it. Didn't go talk to him. Ooh. Boy. Home plate 17 inches, and he just threw two pitches that were about 40 inches apart. Yes. So, uh, Gage going out there to talk to him. Probably just trying to calm him down. Say, hey, look, fire his pigskin in there. That's right. Celedonio, uh, if you didn't get that reference, is also the quarterback for the Vero Beach High School Fighting Indians. And the scary thing for those Treasure Coast football teams out there is he's only a junior. Only a junior with some good receivers coming back as well. Losing a couple good ones, but has a couple good ones coming back. Conversation on the mound must have done some good. Celedonio with the ball right down the middle for strike one. Counts 1-2 one, two with two outs. Runners on second and third. Top of the third Ooh. inning. And there's strike two. Caught the corner, it looked like. Once again, we don't have the greatest view up here, but we are biased. 2-2-2, two, 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 no good for you. And Ooh, there's nice ball three. Block, Gage. Nice block by Brackett there. Saves a run. So we've got a full count here with two outs. We don't have a runner on first. So the runners probably won't be going. We hope not. <laughs> they hope not. Well. The umpire letting the uh, the players on the field know it's a full count. Oop, foul tip back. Bracket can't hold it. Gets back to the fence. That keeps count full. Guy from third ran pretty hard there for a second. Yeah, he I sure did. It was going, so, uh. Hey, weatherman, what's the uh, temperature, man? It's getting cool. It feels up like there. it's dropping. Yeah. I'm glad I got my uh, long sleeves. 72, 72 degrees. And sunny. Not so sunny right now. Vero Another Beach. Foul ball. Foul ball back. It's making Celedonia work for this third out. Got a little action up in the uh, visitor's bullpen over there. I'm going to let you know who that is in just a second. It's number 17, Nathan Beauregard. In the bullpen. Oh, and there's strike three on a pitch. Low and away there. Looked like it could have easily been ball four. Hey, we'll take it. That's our first A. Can I help you? Nope, just looking. Got to work on that a little bit, Birdie. Yeah, we got to work on a lot. But you know what? We're trying. That's five KAs for the Indians uh, this evening. And uh, that brings us to the bottom of the third inning. All right, let's get some more runs. Want to at least get those two runs right here. Who we got coming up this inning? Looks like a pinch hitter. Well, normally it would be uh, David Lucci, Hunter Cooley, and Peter Holden. But that's pending any pinch runners and any bench players. Looks like uh, Aaron Addis getting ready to hit. Eight nothing in the third inning. You can uh, start getting some guys a little extra work in here, right, Bernie? Yeah, like we said earlier, two games more, two more games this week, and uh, want to get some guys in, maybe rest a couple guys, and you don't ever risk injury. Let's see if that's Beauregard, is that? 
We do have a new pitcher in here for uh, for the Voltage Airs, I believe. It is number 17, Nathan Beauregard, who we saw in the bullpen a little earlier. So we're switching arms here. We're going to a righty. Again, we've got another tall pitcher here. These Canadians, uh, they sprout. They do. They got some big boys. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them play hockey. This Other is the sports are up there. This is the first traditional delivery that we've seen from either the JV or the uh, varsity teams. Yeah, not bad. He's got good looking form, good looking mechanics. Throws the ball pretty well. We'll Here see what the Indians can do against right him. Here. Ooh, a little hanger. But yeah. Throw it for a strike. Glad to see on deck circles coming out in the bottom of the third of the second game. Yeah, we all make mistakes, Bertie. Coach Rahal could cannot be happy about that one. Yeah, we don't like tearing up the turf uh, if we can avoid it. The kids work hard on the field. Coaches do too. As a matter of fact, the very first conversation I ever had with uh, Mr. Lucci, David Lucci, uh, we were talking about doing these broadcasts and if he'd like to have Carter and Associates sponsor. And while I was on the phone with him, he said, listen, I got to go. I got to go lay seed on the field. Uh -huh. So uh, we've got a lot of volunteers out here, a lot of guys that make this place a, a beautiful place to play baseball. It's a good, uh, good group of parents that work hard on the field. They work a lot in the cages, too. Something's always going on with the netting over there, so they're always in there fixing something. And uh, they have a field day where a lot of parents come out and all the kids come out on a Saturday. Um, it's usually the first Saturday after the season starts or – you know, practices and, and kids work. And uh, Booster Club actually feeds them that day, too. So Booster Club's always doing something for these kids. So we've got a pinch hitter up here for uh, David Lucci. This is Aaron Addis, wearing number 14. Aaron Addis. I believe it's his first at bat of the year. What do you think of that walk up song right there? Uh, it's different, that's for sure. I like it. I can get into it. Tune. Uh, I can't name that tune. That's a little too jiggy for me. <laughs> As Will Smith would say, yeah, these guys are getting jiggy with it. That's a little too much for my taste, but fancy song there. So new pitcher, new hitter, and uh, Addis fouls away to the right side. We're going to wait for, uh, is that Fleet over there picking That's that up? Fleet. We can zoom in on Fleet real quick. All right, let's take a look at some of the coaches here. Got Fleet over there. Oh, here comes Pitch. Oh, inside almost gets. And uh, Coach Griff's usually out there, but he must be with the JV team. So we have uh, Coach Ray Hall here. And here comes the pitch. Pitch from the box. As you can see, our view isn't uh, as good as the camera that you guys are typically getting, but it looks like that was a pitch just a bit outside. So we're going to go back to the normal angle that you guys are used to for the 2-1 pitch. He fouls it back for strike two. So it's 2-2 on Addis with the Indians up 8 nothing in the bottom of the third inning. Looks like another possible pinch hitter on deck. Hayden Osteen, I believe. That's right. Hayden Osteen is uh, coming up after that strikeout. This is the fourth one for the Voltage Airs this evening. Tell you what, after that first inning, they've looked like they've calmed down a little bit. Yeah, uh, both both games so far, you know. Yeah. Seven and eight. You know, anytime you give up those runs, you know, five's really calming down if you look at it that way, though, too. Yeah. Hey, Nostein is in here pinch hitting for uh, Hunter Cooley, who was the DH this evening. This is also Osteen's first at bat of the season. And he hits Woo! a ball up the middle. Way to go, Hayden! And uh, we're going to give that an infield hit, I believe. You got to give that a hit. Up, oh, down top. Hope we uh, weren't too late on that. So 
That's going to bring up Peter Holton here with one out in the bottom of the third. The Indians up 8-0. And uh, Hayden Osteen's on first. <laughs> Holton looks at a strike for the first pitch at the at-bat. So one. Wait, 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 wait. Osteen with a big secondary lead over there at first. He's thinking about going, and he is going. And the catcher can't find the ball. And uh, he finally does and just throws it back to the pitcher. Some heads-up base running by Osteen there, a kid that hadn't been on the bases all season. He's only had one at bat. Just thinking baseball. I like it. Hey, yeah, way to be aggressive. Um, you know, another rule is you kind of go hard till you get 10. Once you get 10, you kind of – you know, call off the dogs a little bit. I well, say a lot, but a little bit. I agree with calling off the dogs, but a lot of these kids are getting their first taste of uh, varsity baseball this season, so I can't blame them for going on that. No, especially, like I said, you play hard till 10. Some swings at a uh, pitch that's a little above the hands there. It's 1-2 on them. As you guys can see from that fancy umpire view, you can see Osteen taking that lead from second. It's not too big of a lead, but it's kind of a cool view that you're allowed, to, that you're able to see from home. Uh, that guy has been a great camera guy. All that guy has been awesome all night. That fence mm -hmm. has been great. So we got two two on Holden here. It's the bottom of the third. Indians are up eight nothing. Hayden Osteen's on second. So the next game we're going to try to have a scoreboard picture for everybody. Yeah, we're going to try. We uh, we got it set up. We might play with a little picture-in-picture picture here since we've got a uh, – It's ain't nothing later, but we'll give it a shot. We'll see what it looks see what like. what it looks like at home. Foul ball away. So here's our uh, fancy, fancy camera here with our picture in picture. Hope you guys like it. Of course, there's a ball hit immediately after I do that. This so guy's on it, but and uh, that's going to be an infield hit for Holden. All right. So we've got uh, that brings Osteen over to third. We still got our little picture in picture there, and uh, hopefully you guys can see that well. All right, we got that magical number of 10 on that first base right now. We need to get him around. Debbie Mendez is coming up. Who's, uh, two hits on the day, I believe. Right. It's two for two. Kind of with runners on uh, first and third. And we've got one out. Pitch on the outer uh, third of the plate there, called for a strike. It brings the count to 1-1 one, one with one out. Ooh, that was a nice off-speed pitch there for uh, strike two. Counts 1-2 to Gabby Mendez, playing third base this evening for the Indians, and he's two for two on the night. And um, another thing about these teams, when they come down, they usually stay at Dodger Town. I believe this team's staying in Coco, however, and they'll play a bunch of games in a short period of time. So you'll see a lot of guys just pitch one inning here, one inning there, just to get through the week. Um, sometimes they'll play five to seven games in a week and then go back home. I'm sure that I would imagine they flew, but, you know, teams have rode down from Canada. Well, it's a frigid 32 degrees in Drummondville, so I think they're happy to be here. Foul ball off the fence there. Counts 2-2 to Mendez. But, yeah, you play all those games. You only bring so many arms. Yeah, I mean, you bring every arm you have. And then, <laughs> you know, you tell that guy to throw left even if he's a righty sometimes. But, little, uh, little Pat Venditti reference there, yeah, huh? Yeah, another Dodger. Yeah, he's with the Dodgers now. He's in the Yankee system for a long time. Oh, a breaking ball that uh, Mendez kind of chops at. <laughs> He was able to foul it back to stay alive. Keeps the count 2-2. So 
So, I mean, they could have even played a game earlier today. You, you never know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll catch kids or teams that, you know, played a game at 10 o'clock this morning at Coco, drive down here, sit for a JV game, and then jump on the field. Oh, and a check swing, ball up to the pitcher. He's going to field it and make the play to first. And Osteen does not go home on that. He retreats back to third. However, Holden moves over to second. So that's the second out of the inning there. Blake Caudell is coming up, the right fielder for the Indians. He's got runners on uh, second and third. So the Voltage Airs have a chance to get out of this inning without uh, any damage after giving up an eight spot in the first yeah, inning, Bernie. It's, uh, the trail will not be happy if that happens. Mm. But strike one to Caudell. Hopefully uh, Blake can get into a ball. He got center field. It's a little shallow. So hopefully he can hit one over there in the gap and drive Ooh. a little bit. Big swing and a miss there for strike two. Bring these two runs in. He got hit by a pitch in the first inning on an 0-2 count in the back of the foot. Grounded out to the shortstop earlier this evening. So he's 0-1. It's 0-2 to him right here. It's a ball away. One to the count on Caudell. Two outs. Runners on second and third. Indians up eight nothing in the bottom of the third. It's a, it's a long game, but hey, we're happy we got runs. Hey, it's a fun one. Yeah. After Friday night, it's nice to uh, yeah. It's nice to have a game like come this. Come out, score some runs, and um, Indians got another big one this Friday. They'll be at Central at 3:30 on Friday. If you can make it, we will not be there. Um, That's right. We do all the home games. We're gonna try to do an away game, maybe here or there. But yeah, especially when they get deeper in the season, you hit up playoff time. We'll try to make every playoff game if we can. Um, it's tough. We don't, you know, have a press box on the road. And yeah, this is quite the setup here. So uh, we're starting to feel a little more comfortable as the uh, balls hit to the shortstop. Play over to first, and he can't dig it out of the ground. It goes by the first baseman, and. Uh, Caudell goes to second without a uh, without a play, and both runs score. And we got that magic number of ten. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is David Chanoof is coming up with the score now 10 nothing Indians. We have uh, Blake Caudell on second. David Chanoof is 0 for 0 tonight with two walks. But he looks to strike one right there. And um, another thing about Friday at, at Central, you know, tough environment. They usually got a decent crowd down there. Um, Central won their game last week. They um, beat some beat up on Centennial a little bit. Central could swing the bats. So, um, you know, it's almost like a must win. I know it's early. It's funny to say that it's early in the season, but you don't want to go 0-2 in the district, especially, um, you know, when two teams will probably be 2-0. So you got you got to beat Central, and then you also got a tough game on Saturday to worry about with uh, Westminster Christian coming into town from Miami. Which we will be broadcasting that, uh, yes. that evening. It's a 6 o'clock uh, first pitch, and uh, we'll be here. A non-trivia Twitter question, but you know a famous alumni guy from there? I don't. Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez. Oh, that, I have a feeling that might come into play a little later. Maybe mm, it's not. It won't be a trivia question. No. But, no. But uh, oh, what a foul talk ball a little off bit the about uh, that program. I don't know if that was off the catch or the umpire, but they're both taking a little break there. Um, Counts two-two on Chinooka. Last year during the preseason, that's uh, where Vero played one of their games. And um, they have a kid named M MJ Mendez. MJ Mendez. Or Menlendez. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, we'll figure it out before Saturday. Yeah, he was a high draft pick last year. His dad is a head coach at FIU. He was a commit there. But um, when you get drafted that high, you got to go. Yeah. So, you know, good kid, good ball player. I believe he hit a dinger against us. But it was preseason, so we won't count it. 2-2 <laughs> two -two pitch to Chinupa is in there for strike three. And he is down looking. So that's the fifth strikeout of the game for the Voltageers. 
They give up two runs in that inning. And the score is 8 nothing. Fighting Indians going into the top of the fourth. And uh, looks like Seldonio will be back on the bump. Fourth, in, fourth inning is brought to you by Massey Romans. Managing wealth with an eye toward the future demands vigilance and skill in today's global economy. Over the years, we've worked with clients and their other professional advisors, including attorneys and accountants, to create comprehensive wealth management plans designed to make the best use of their wealth today and help ensure its endurance for future generations, and we'll do the same for you. We can offer you an array of personalized services, support, and guidance that can help make a positive difference in the pursuit of your financial goals. Call Massey Romans today. Thank you again, Massey Romans, for supporting Vero Beach High School Baseball. And if uh, you're watching our game at home, this probably means you're not watching the UCF uh, Florida Gator baseball game. We have a little update there. Going in, well, it's in the bottom of the fourth now. And it's 6-3 Golden Knights over those Gators. So, uh, got the defending national champions being beat by a team in Orlando. So, what does that tell you? You know, there's good baseball all around Florida. We got a lot of great college programs in, uh, in the state between Florida, Florida State, Miami, UCF, FAU is a good school, yeah, FIU. Um, Bethune Cookman usually makes a tournament and wins a game or two. There's uh, not very many pushover D1s in Florida. South Florida's, they were nationally ranked for a little bit last year. So if you like good baseball, Florida is the place to be. We've got. Uh, Maybe not such great major league teams this year. It looks like the Marlins are uh, cleaning Ooh. the house and the Rays what maybe uh, call rebuilding. It's the Rays have gotten rid of a few guys, but uh, if you're looking for good baseball, there's plenty at the college and high school level. And there'll be plenty of major league baseball that's quality, but it's gonna be from the opposing teams this year. So this brings us to the top of the fourth inning. We have Jonathan Carden leading off. Well, I don't know if that's true. We've got. He's a pitcher. He's a pitcher. Oh, that's why. He's trying to trick you, eh? Oh! Comebacker to Celedonio. Nice Pitches it over to Holden. And uh, that's the first out of the inning. I'm going to get this guy's name right. I feel kind of bad. It's Alex LeClerc. That's right. Next up will be number 14, Tristan Gilbert. Tristan Joubert is coming up, the first baseman for the Voltigiers. One out in the bottom, I'm uh, sorry, in the top of the first, with the Indians up 10 0. We have time for, uh, I'm not going to tell you why, but. Uh, There's something going on down yeah. there. Some umpires are more strict than others, I'll say that. So Joubert is uh, 0 for 1 today. He's grounded out to the shortstop. There's a ball hit up the middle. <coughs> Nick Dean with the play. Oh. And uh, that's a 6 3 if you keep it scored home. That's a throw it around. Next up is number 37, Alex Clark. And that brings up Alex Allard, the right fielder for the Voltage Airs. Comebacker. All right. Quick, Quick inning game. for Celedonia. 1-3. Holy cow. How many pitches did he throw there? Was that four? Um, you know, math's still not my thing. Yeah, and, uh, I know. Birdie, come on. And you're killing me on well, the I'll math let, I'll let my wife do all the math. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bird, uh, probably in the math section of the SAT, scored yes. higher than both of us total math yes. and English. Yeah. yeah, whatever the highest you can get in that is probably what we... Maybe came close. To right. It. Right. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, so smart. That's all right. That's why she chose me, right? That's well. <laughs> I mean, can't all be perfect. But she's got one imperfection. It might have yes. been that. <laughs> We're still waiting for her to see the eye doctor. But yes. Uh, yes. Anyhow, that's going to bring us to the bottom of the fourth inning. We're going to have Gage Brackett, Matt Vaughn, and Nick Dean starting off the inning. See some uh, JV guys floating around. I just saw Coach Griff come uh, in the dugout. So uh, hopefully they won. We can win three games in one day. That's always a good thing to do. Actually, it looks like for Gage Brackett, I'm not sure who's going to pinch it, but I see Alan Glanville in the on-deck circle over here. I can't imagine he's going to be hitting for Brackett. Well, 
It looks like that's what we have, for sure. Fleet's going back out to uh, first base position there to coach first. Looks like Ben Jurgen's out there taking some swings. Got Alan Glanville. So let's, uh, are you ready for the trivia question, Nancy? Yeah, right? let's get the answer for that. Huh? Um, All right, read, the, read the question again, Bertie. Remind the people of what we're answering. Reminder, uh, answer this on Twitter if you can. So although he is currently divorced, which Hall of Fame catcher got married the same day as his MLB debut at the age of 19? Okay, so this catcher made it in 1991, got married, and then went out and played a baseball game. No big deal. It's only your first ever game, and you're catching Kevin Brown, of all people. You got a couple ribbies, right? One for four with two ribs, and that would be Ivan Pudge Rodriguez. Pudge. So um, that, that Texas team was stacked back in that yeah, day. Palmero and uh, who else was on that team? Who was the, uh, the RBI guy that they had? Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. Gonzalez, man, that guy... Boy, he's driving some runs. Meanwhile, Alan Glanville's pinch hitting for uh, Gage Brackett, number 21. He's got no two count right here. He's a lefty, huh? Oh, and he looks at strike three. That's his first at bat of the season. Yeah, Ruben Sierra is on that team. Ruben Sierra. Julio Franco. That's pretty, pretty solid team. That was a great team, yeah. How did they do? How did, they never. Uh, who was holding them back in the AL West those days? They finished third, so two teams apparently. Yeah. Um, man, that's a that's tough. Oh, swinging a miss by uh, Ben Urigan, who's pinch hitting for Matt Vaughn. So in the West that year, you had the Twins won 95 games. That's right. They're in the Central now. The White Sox won uh, 87. And so are the White Sox. So two teams that aren't in the division anymore beat out the Rangers for a division win in 1991. Yeah. That's the year the Blue Jays. Did the Blue Jays go or the Twins went that year? I think the 1991 Jays. was the Twins. Yeah. The Twins, uh, the Twins beat the Braves. Braves yeah. That's right. It was the very first World Series I remember watching. Kirby Puckett hit a home run in that World Series. Yeah, and the, they had the wall with like the plexiglass. Yep. Like, like like the hockey plexiglass. That's right. The Blue Jays, with our uh, little Canadian reference there, won in 1992 and 1993. And Joe Carter. 1993, Joe Carter hit one of the most famous home runs in uh, World Series history to actually win the World Series. How amazing is that? That's uh, pretty incredible. And it's like uh, Jurgen went down on strikes as well. We have a two batters and two strikeouts. And now Xander Bagovello is coming up. We're in number four. We have a punch story. That's right. We got to meet him over uh, in uh, Miami this year at an all-star game. That's right. We went to the Fan Fest, and Pudge signed uh, for both of us, actually. And we got to chat with him a little bit because there was some scuffle there, yes. right? I believe um, a guy that uh, started drinking heavily. This, mind you, this was uh, as soon as Fan Fest opened. It was like 9 or 10 in the morning. It was early uh, morning. And uh, this guy should not have uh, been consuming beverages like he was. And... Uh, he tried actually fighting Pudge Rodriguez. To make a long story short, Pudge Rodriguez threw a, a soft squeeze squeeze ball uh, in the air, and it, and it hit somebody, and this guy went went crazy and was very upset. Bagovella with a uh, fly ball. Looks like it's going to go out of play to the right side. Camera guy was on it. Director was not. It's going to bring the count to 1-2. But anyway, this guy was very upset with Rodriguez and uh, was shouting and yelling and making a scene. And the next day... Pudge Rodriguez had a, uh, a signing that Bertie and I got to go to to meet him, and we brought it up, and he actually stopped signing for a minute yeah, and talked to talked us. Yeah, <laughs> was pretty cool. Posed with us for a couple pictures, and uh, said something was wrong with that guy. Oh, ground ball to the right side for Vagnavello. And he gets beat by a step. And uh, that's the inning. One, two, three, in order. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that, uh, that guy didn't like his dad being hit by a ball that, you know, a little bit harder than cotton, I would say. <laughs> and uh, he was ready to climb this little little field, I guess they had out there, and was gonna climb the outfield wall and uh, show Pudge what he thought about it. And uh, we got pretty close to Pudge. Pudge is, uh, he's still not small. He's still a big guy, I mean, he's still and, uh, catcher size. Yeah, and uh, he said bring it on, basically, to him. You know, he tried apologizing, was first class all the way, but um, this guy wasn't slowing down. And, 
And so, you know, security was nowhere to be found, by the way. Nowhere. This went on for, I'd say, a good five, ten minutes. And, uh, you know, Pudge was trying to give a demonstration, and this guy was uh, not letting it go on too much. So that's our uh, personal Pudge Rodriguez story. It's going to bring us to the top of the fifth, and we're going to get a couple words from our fifth inning sponsor, AYS Employee Leasing. You're too busy seeing patients to worry about payroll. Our flat fee service eliminates that worry while also handling your workers' compensation liability. Contact us today to learn more. All right, so that's going to bring us back to the reservation. Uh, the score is 10-0 Fighting Indians over the Drummondville Voltagiers. I believe this is it. This is top five, right? It's top of the fifth, and we have a new pitcher. Anthony Cost is coming in to throw. Hard throwing righty. Tall, lanky guy. Yes, he's a commit to um, to a school in Texas. I'm unsure of the name. I apologize because uh, we just committed to him recently. He, the team out of Texas saw him pitch in that preseason classic in Merritt Island. They loved him, and they signed him pretty much the next day. So, uh you know, he had a good outing up there. Like you said, tall, lengthy, got a very live arm. Um, when he throws strikes in the zone, he's tough to hit. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a quick inning here. I'll tell you what, that Mustang Classic was a sight to see. 26 scouting, Major League Baseball scouting directors were out there out of 30. There were over 100 scouts there from different Major League teams and college teams. And uh, it doesn't shock me at all that a kid like Anthony Cost got noticed. No, definitely not. But my question to you was, where were the other four? It's <laughs> a good question. This must have been Seattle, Oakland, San Francisco, and I don't know, some other team out west <laughs> that doesn't have a scouting director yes. in Florida. But, uh, you know, they, sh they should have took a trip for that one. That was, uh, yeah, you'll, I don't know if you'll ever see another high school preseason classic like that. I was a uh, side to see, like you said. Well, brings us Julian Hool, who is the uh, second baseman for the Voltagers, leading off the top of the fifth, and he's got a 1-1 one -one count. Cost likes to work fast. He pretty much, you know, throws a lot of fastballs, gets that sign, and look, he's ready to go. I see that. I don't get the pencil off the book before I'm back on it. Mark and Paul are strike. That's 2-2 two -two to the batter. I believe it's dropped another couple degrees. Since it is freezing cold here. I feel like I'm in Canada. B fly ball to the right field gap. It gets over the head. The right fielder, and he's coming in. He's going three, and we've got to play at third, ladies and gentlemen, and he is out. Wow. What a great play by the right fielder. Relay there. I believe that's Vaglavello on the re on the relay. We've got a couple substitutions there, so you're gonna have to. Yeah, I believe. Uh, but I think that's Aaron Addis out in right field. Xander Vaglavello at second. Is that Blake Caudell? And Blake third? Caudell has moved from right field to third. Wow. And uh, that was just a phenomenal play there. That's a tough little scoop too, man. I, I guess when it's nice. ten nothing, you take chances like that. Not well, conventionally, huh? Not. Oh, yeah. You know, the Indians got a lot of good players, but they don't have a whole lot of depth in, on their uh, benches. Um, you know, you can carry a 20-man roster in the playoffs. During the regular season, you can carry as many as you want. Um, they're not they're not a whole lot of depth in there, and, uh, especially in the infield positions. Well, it's good to get these kids some uh, opportunities in here. Definitely. Get a game that's 10 nothing. you know. Get them in, get them some reps, yeah. get them some varsity time. Because they're out there still playing like it's a tight game, as they should be. That's right. That's a quick five-pitch strikeout from Anthony Cost. Boy, this guy this guy works fast. Up next for the Volkswagen number 38, Bill Provencal. So that's two outs on the top of the fifth inning with a score 10-0. And this is Phil Provenciel. Provencel. I don't know. It's French. Yes, better than mine. We're at number 38 playing center field for the Voltagers. And in theory, could this be the last uh, batter of the game, Bernie, with the yeah. mercy rule? Yeah, I believe it will be the last batter of the game. Up 10 runs in the fifth inning, and uh, the game would be over. So anyhow, we've got no one count to, uh, we'll just say Phil, who's the center fielder. 
Make that 0-2. It's working fast. 1-2, one 1-2. Two, one two. I believe the count's 1-2, but the umpire, I think, thinks it's 2-2. Two two. It is 2-2. Two two. Well, yeah, he'd be right. I guess he would be. Yeah. I was trusting Mr. Holden over there on the uh, doing the oh, scorebook. There's there's strike three. Ladies and gentlemen, thank so, uh, you for coming out tonight. To the and that's, that's, that's it. That's it. We'll see you guys Saturday for sure. Germanville. That's right. So that uh, that brings the game to ten nothing. Fighting Indians over the, the Drummondville Voltageers. This was a not a scheduled game before the season Paradise. started. They kind of threw this in, in uh, last minute on us. I think we knew travels. what Thursday. Yeah, well, we knew sometime the last week. Yep, we're we three and one now. Uh, but we're now three and one. That's right. Three and one. So hopefully and next time we see it will be four and one. And on looking for that fifth win. That's right. So no technical difficulties this evening. I'm very proud of that. Oh, we had no. Uh, it never went off. Never went off. Um, you know, you're welcome for that, by the yeah, way. That's right. No audio issues, as far as I could tell. Just the camera guy. Just the camera guy. And <laughs> Just the, the camera and guy the, and the director. And the director. Of so the it's cameras. possible Saturday we'll have a third member of this team, actually uh, owner of AYS Employee Leasing, who is our fifth inning yes. sponsor, um, which will be quite the uh, the help. So what do we do with our sixth and seventh inning sponsors? Well, let's we read them off. Who do we have here? Do we even have them? We have VBQ. Let me oh, find yeah. the script for these guys. Yeah, they're, they're quality quality food. That's right. VBQ is Vero Beach's premier barbecue catering service. Whether catering for a wedding, birthday party, summer get-together, or any other gathering you can imagine, VBQ is the barbecue catering service for you. Call 772-559-0611 to book your catering event today. And normally we only have five inning sponsors because our guest takes up two innings, but uh, that will conclude all of our... Sponsors. So thank all of the sponsors, Citrus 3, Carter & Associates, AYS Employee Leasing, Massey Romans, and VBQ for uh, your contributions to Vero Beach Baseball. And I think that's going to do it for us. Yeah, it was fun. Um, hey, we hit double digits tonight, and we got another shutout thanks to that awesome tandem out there of uh, Addis, Xander, and uh, Blake. That was, uh, to keep that shutout. That, that shutout is important for uh Coach Chris, that's for sure. That's the third one of the year. Helps that's boost morale. Games. Yeah. Four games, three shutouts. That's right. So, uh, so definitely the play of the game. Morale got boosted by this game, ten nothing. Let's hope they take that uh, that momentum into Friday night's uh, yeah, contest. And Friday is uh, it's you know, like I said, it's a must win. Even though it's you know only second district game, but you got to go out there and get that dub. So just to recap, Friday evening, where are they playing? They are at Fort Pierce Central at 3.30, and uh, it's not far from here. If you can make it, make it. Go support your Indians. And Saturday evening, we'll be right back here at the reservation at 6 o'clock. Be playing Westminster Christian. And uh, if you can't make it out to the reservation, you can always uh, watch on YouTube. Make sure to, ch to share this channel with all the baseball fans you know because this is a great team and some great baseball out here. And if you have any um, comments or concerns, email them to Curtis because I don't really want them. Twitter. Twitter's where you do it. VBHS Baseball. Our Citrus 3. <laughs> so anyhow, thank you again, everybody, for watching, and uh, go Indians.